Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's podcast with me, Mike, and Ian. Say hi, Ian. Hey, everybody. How you doing? We are going to show you some tricks uh, about Google Slides today. If you don't know about Google Slides, go get a cup of coffee, sit down, and we'll take a little trip together. All right, so let's get started. As you can see on the screen here, I have got my, my Google Drive up. But I want to make a new Google Slide. Again, with Google, everything is done with the plus button. So simply put, Google Slides is Google's version of PowerPoint. Now, this is my favorite Google product. I use it every day. I love it because with Google, everything syncs flawlessly. But with Google Drive being a cloud system, I can create my Google Slides in Google system. It saves automatically. And I have a presentation that's as equal, or if not better, than PowerPoint. Mike and I are not of equal minds. I prefer to work in PowerPoint. However, Mike, you can attest to this. Are Google Slides and PowerPoint compatible with each other? If I had upload a PowerPoint, can I use it in Google Slides? Yes, they are compatible with one another, and they talk to one another. I like Google Slides because of the simplicity. I think Google makes a simple product, mm. um, but I know, as Ian was saying, you can do a lot more with PowerPoint. If you take a PowerPoint and you drop it in, so I'm dropping it in here. Okay, you'll notice that the PowerPoint is here. If I open this up as a PowerPoint, I have to double click it and download. But if I simply click right click, open with Google Slides. So basically it works the same clicker and you put it up on the screen. It'll look almost the same. Sometimes the fonts don't support each other. So you might have to go back in and clean it up a little bit. Any changes that you make in here will automatically be saved to your um, PowerPoint. Whoa. But you can also do the Google Slides and move it into a PowerPoint. So if I just click download, it will automatically convert my Google slide into PowerPoint. So it'll tap down here at the bottom. There you go. So let's go ahead and use Google Slides. Absolutely love Google Slides. It's always important to name your presentation. So we'll call this Mike and Ian's slides. There you go. You have two main toolbars. You've got this toolbar here, that's your commands, file, edit, view, insert, same basically as any Microsoft program. And then you have the more visible toolbars. There's so many options you can do. Now, some of you are thinking, okay, I'm used to PowerPoint. PowerPoint's what I know. If PowerPoint makes you comfortable and you can put a lesson together pretty quickly with that, then use it. But I challenge you to try Google Slides because you can make the slides a lot faster and you can keep it in your folder without saving it. And my friend here, Ian, is from Northern California. So, Ian, I'm going to give you a report on San Francisco. Oh, man. Yeah, Ian and I, we are going to collaborate, and we're going to do a report on San Francisco. Well, first things first, let me make sure I've given Ian access. So I click Share, Add Ian here. Now, when I give access, I usually do viewer only. That way, people don't change your work. But trust Ian. Did you get a notification? Okay, I have this email here. Mike and Ian slides. How interesting. Oh, he invited me to edit. That's neat. And I am in. So if your students have Chromebooks or they go to a PC bong, wherever they work on a project together, everyone can have their own screen. Now, we have this blank canvas here. And I've challenged Ian and I to do a report on San Francisco. Now, one of the things that I've noticed when I go to different schools or when I see different teachers' presentation is the overusage of words. I don't like to see a lot of clutter in my slides. Slides should be simplistic. For every point that you have in English, you should have some type of clip art or image. So I tend to live by the 50-50 rule. 